Hello everyone, my name is Jansen Azaria, CEO of Higher Ground. And this week, I'd like to discuss responding to escalation. So, you might already have a routine, you're reframing your fear, um, you're using stress to your advantage, and you're practicing how to turn conflict into something healthy. But sometimes, still can, things can still get out of hand. And you might be wondering, what is going on? Well, some of it is because a lot of the behaviors of your children might be escalating. And quite honestly, some of our own behaviors as adults might also be escalating. And this is a combination of many things. One is there's a lot of stress, there's a lot of fear and anxiety due to current situations that the pandemic has given us. Um, there's also the nonstop new behaviors that you might be encountering. You know, for the first time in many, many years, you are with your child 24 seven. So you're, you, realizing that your child may have had behaviors that you've never seen before. And that leads to a lot of frustration. There's a lot of frustration going on from you, from your child. Your child might be frustrated themselves because they're not used to you being their teacher, their parent, um, and, and the multiple roles that are being played. And we're all realizing that we're good at some roles, but maybe not so good with other roles. So, this leads to a lot of escalated behaviors. So what do we do in this moment? Well, one of the first things we need to learn is being proactive. So part of being proactive allows us to step back, you know, kind of really rethink, reframe what's going on, really emphasize what might be important right now and what might not be so important. Be proactive in a lot of the things that you're doing. Build a routine. Really spend a lot of time teaching your kids and yourself how to cope with the fear and the anxiety that's going on. Part of that is also, again, as we discussed last week, really investing in reframing conflict. But sometimes, no matter how much you do all these things, behaviors really do still escalate. So what do we do then? Well, we need to learn a technique called de-escalation. So, before we practice the escalation and teach you the technique, it's important for us to understand the escalation cycle. So the escalation cycle starts off with calm, right? And then something usually happens that triggers the behavior. Now, uh, these triggers can be a lot of things. It can be something as simple as a loud noise, or it can be something as complex as they woke up and there's all these stressors that's already going on at home and they're worried about it. Then it leads to agitation. Now, agitation is the point where a person becomes unfocused, they begin to withdraw, and they begin to be off task. A lot of teachers usually see this often, especially when things get more and more difficult in the classroom. But now you're experiencing this at home. Then there's a point of what we call the acceleration. This is when the behavior kind of starts becoming inappropriate. Now, at this point, you can actually respond and you can quell it right here. Sometimes, you know, you give them the stare of a parent, you know, that powerful stare, or you've mentioned their full name. We always joke, oh, when, when we start saying our kid's second name, oh, that means they're in trouble. And sometimes you can stop it right here at acceleration. But sometimes um, behaviors really do take over. And if you guys remember, we explained this. We go from our front of our brain to the back of our brain where we go to survival. And that's when it peaks. When it peaks, this is what we call our no-go zone. That's usually when injury to others and self can sometimes happen. Aggressive behaviors really happen. Um, that's when they're in fight mode. Or they may go to flight mode where they run away, they do absolutely nothing want to do with you, or they freeze. They just completely shut down. Now, if you're able to successfully remove them from the peak, and sometimes just with time, um, de-escalation can naturally happen. And then there's a recovery phase where this is really based on the response that you get um, and the response that you give, where a lot of the reflection matters. This is where true behavior change can actually happen. So let's talk about de-escalation. What is actually de-escalation? Well, the goal of de-escalation is to bring someone out of the high-intensity behavior, right? The goal is not to use logic or reasoning because believe it or not, when we are highly escalated, we actually have no ability 
to have any reasoning or logic. So it's no, there is no point trying to reason or trying to explain to a child why their behavior is inappropriate or even using values. Um, it, it really is at this point an appeal to emotions. You have to be able to, to get past the logic and really kind of understand why they're having this emotional response then we, we need to be able to see the early signs. So we need to be able to take this at the moment of agitation as much as possible, right? Take them out from going from this part of their brain to their reptilian brain, right? And then sharing our calm. Calm is just as contagious as fear. Uh, now, we do need to remember that de-escalation is quite unnatural. It's hard for us to stay calm when there's a lot of stressors. So it requires a lot of practice, 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 practice. So then there are actual techniques that we can use so that we can stay calm despite this unnatural state um, so that we are able to successfully de-escalate. And that is what we are going to discuss um, on our Wednesday's video. So that, folks, is an introduction to how to deal with escalated behaviors. Thank you very much.